Question seven. So, uh, for part one, we're asked to work out the distance from A to B. So let's just consider the journey of Q. So we know, we're told we've got an initial speed of 0 0.6, an acceleration of 0 0.9, and a T of 2. So using S equals UT plus half AT squared, we can work out the distance to be 3 meters. Now that's the distance Q takes from M to B. M's halfway up, so our distance from A to B is 2 lots of 3, 6 meters. Now for part two, we're being asked to calculate the speed of P when it reaches B. So let's break this down um, uh, into two bits. So first of all, I'm going to have a look at, um, uh, well basically to be able to do this, I'm going to, the, the, the um, speed of P when it gets to B is going to require me looking at the journey P takes for the second half of the journey from here to here that's going to require me knowing the initial speed of P for the second half of the journey and that is the final speed of Q as he gets to the bottom okay so let's just say that again so our initial speed of P for phase two of the journey will be the final speed of Q as he gets to the bottom so we're going to start off by considering the journey Q takes okay V equals U plus AT so the uh, speed of Q when he gets to B is the initial speed of 0 0.6 plus A, the acceleration of 0 0.9 times the t time of 2, tells us that the speed of B, uh, speed of Q, excuse me, when he gets to B is 2.4. Now, now, so then when we move on to looking at P's journey from um, M to B, his initial speed, so his speed at M, is 2.4 that's the key bit now we know the distance traveled is 3 meters now what do we know about the acceleration of P as he goes um, uh, through, 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 the, through this part here okay so let's consider um, let, let, let's consider his acceleration okay it's no longer 0 0.9 okay because that with all this information was just uh, earlier on so we've got to rework this so uh, if we just consider uh, resolving going downwards uh, we've got uh, the only force we've got going down here is the co component of the weights so we've got that's being mg sin theta so our only force is mg sin theta f equals ma so mg sin theta equals ma the two masses cancel so g sin theta is our acceleration g sin theta so that working there i have done with that little diagram up there so back to uh, working out the speed of um, p at the bottom using v squared equals u squared plus 2as i know u i know s i know a substituting in i can get the v, the speed of v at uh, the speed of p at b is 5.93 now for part three, by considering the motion of Q, calculate the tension in the string while both parties are moving down the plane. So we're going to be looking at Q as he goes down this journey here. So a little diagram to reflect this. Obviously he is going faster than P because Q is going to be on a smoother surface. That's creating some tension in the string. So we've got tension going up the slope. We've got the weight of Q being 0.3 G. We've just been told its mass is 0.3. The components of the weight and the normal reaction. So a resolving uh, perpendicular to the plane, we can see that R equals 0.3 G cos 30. And then resolving in the same direction as the plane, we got our net. So there is movement down the plane, so we're using F equals MA. So our net, our, our, our net force is going to be 0.3 g sin theta that's the, this one here so down down the plane less the tension going up the plane so that is our net force down the plane so f equals ma equals 0.3 times 0.9 that allows us to work out the tension to be 1.2 newtons right moving on to part four We've now got to calculate the coefficient of friction between P and the plane between A and M. So this is really at the same time as Q is going down here, 
P is going down the rough part. Now we've just worked out that the tension between Q and P um, was 1.2, so that was going upwards for Q, but is obviously going downwards for T for P as he's being pulled down the slope effectively. Okay, so that's the key. So make sure you understand where that 1.2s come from. It's the equal and opposite to this. There's obviously friction going on because we're on a rough surface. We've got a weight of 0.4 g, which because we're told that the mass of P is 0.4. So, so these are our forces. So we're just going to really repeat what we've just done. So resolving perpendicular to the plane, we got R equals 0.4G cos 30, this one here. Resolving uh, in the direction of the plane using F equals MA, our net forces are, um, and we're going downwards, so we've got 1.2 being the only force downwards. Uh, no, we haven't. We've got two forces downwards. We've got the 1.2 and also this component of the weight. So 1.2 plus 0.4 g sin 30 are the two forces going downwards, less the force going upwards, which is the friction, and this net force equals the mass times the acceleration, so 0.4 times 0.9. Remember the acceleration for this first part of the journey was 0.9, we were given that up here. So that allows us, uh, given that uh, that allows us to work out what the friction is. So I've just rearranged to solve for friction. So the friction was 2.8. Now friction we know equals mu times the normal reaction, or rearranged the coefficient of friction equals the friction over the normal reaction. So the friction is 2.8. Our normal reaction, we just worked out to be 0.4 g cos theta. One divided by the other gives us 0.825.